so let's uh, let's continue right so um so some foundations about cell groups we looked at so you know this will be helpful when you you know um start if you ever start a uh, a cell group or you you know in 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 your church in your ministry you have cell groups uh, and then you know, these are important things to bring in right these are uh, important uh, tools to evaluate uh, and also it's um, i mean the, the whole cell group model it's a very important very uh, uh, let's say uh, um, I mean, as a if you see the way it is structured um you know if you if you look at um, um let's say uh you know all through church history right you see um what has happened like there's a there's a restoration you know in all the restorative moves of god we see that there is a reformation of theology you know that's you know that is the spiritual truth uh, which was uh, during the dark ages we see that okay a lot of things were either constrained right uh, or held back by the body of christ or to the body of christ um and also a, a lot of things were lost right simply because of uh, you know uh, denominationalism or uh, simply because of nominal christianity right so we see that there was a reformation of theology right this all this entire all this deep spiritual truths god is the god brought it back in the rest and we studied this you know in the restorative moves of god god bringing back okay um, uh, about salvation about the spirit of god about healing and deliverance and gifts of the spirit and the apostolic ministry the um the equipping of the saints the 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 sainthood of the or the um you know the priesthood of the believer where every believer is a minister of god right so all that we see being restored uh, another thing that is being restored is the uh, what we see is the reformation of structure you know the, the reformation or change of church structure itself where it is uh, it is not about um you know just one person who's doing all the work but you know there is this reformation of structure where you see that along with the reformation of theology there is also the reformation of church structure where you see that okay every believer rising up and taking his or her place in the body of christ being equipped to serve to minister right so how does that happen that will happen only if there is a change in structure if there is a reformation of structure because if the structure of the church does not allow this to happen does not allow let's say equipping the saints okay if the structure of the, the church is structured in such a way that it does not um raise up leaders right it does not um encourage leaders to go and you know take their place in the body of christ it might mean even you know starting something on their own it might mean starting you know their own work in some other place um you know their own ministry in some other place so if the church is structured in such a way you know it has its it has its rules and laws and you know um you know leader leaders or one person who's there um then you know it doesn't permit the move of god right it restricts what god really wants just like how the how you know there was no understanding of the truth and that restricted the move of god right but god brought back so the same way we see there is a re- reformation of church structure as well right and we see that in the uh, in the in the cell groups and uh, which are a very important a uh, way in which the believers can be equipped for ministry 
right discipleship they they don't uh, stay as believers uh, mere believers just coming and going and uh, you know attending uh, they don't stay that way but they move from there to be disciples they move from there to be ministers and then leaders right so so this is a, uh, this is something that we see so it's important that um, you know at some point that we we recognize it right the, we see the importance of it and then bring it into um you know our churches right or if it is already there to to e make it even more effective you know, some of some of us who are part of life groups or cell groups to see how can be even more effective right how can leaders be raised up uh to you know to do the work of ministry how can others become disciples strong disciples rooted in the word right led by the spirit of god how can they become strong disciples right how can they how can they discover their calling how can we help them to do that right um so these are things that um, the church can do uh, or you know if you are in a leadership position that you can bring in you know if you if you think on these lines and uh, you know evaluate along these lines and say okay i need to help people to become you know this so that will be helpful right okay so let's look at um Uh, leaders becoming a uh, uh, leader, a cell leader. So there are some, you know, areas of focus. So there are some important things that we need to uh, consider that we need to look at. Okay. So first of all, you know, these some of these things are repetitions. So I will just go over quickly. You know, maintaining a strong personal walk with God. You know, it, it goes without saying that uh, the person whom we are considering to be a cell group leader, or if we ourselves are cell group leaders, to maintain a strong personal walk with God, right? Uh, and uh, the importance of doing or obeying the Word of God, even before we teach it, right? Obey it, live it, live it out in our own lives before we actually teach it to others and instruct others in it. Because the Lord Jesus says, you know, Matthew five verse nineteen, the latter part of it, it says, "Okay, whatever whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever does and teach, and so that's the order and the, and the right priority." Right? Matthew fifteen and verse fourteen talks about how leaders can be blind. You know, how leaders, if they don't, um, you know, if they're not uh, visionaries or if they are blind to the truth then they will lead others also in the same way okay so so which means that um as a leader as spiritual cell group leaders we need to be spiritually strong uh, in our personal lives um because we cannot teach others what we have not learned we cannot lead others to places where we have not gone before and uh, we cannot give others right what we, what we do not have so uh, so the importance for us to you know uh, the place where we are right now yeah, spiritually we can definitely you know minister and the th the the thing is to keep growing so that we can take others also to higher levels of growth uh, higher levels of maturity spiritual maturity uh, in our journey so as we grow as we experience breakthroughs um, to take others also into the same right so the importance of progressing in our walk with god progressing in our growth in maturity and christian uh, or christ likeness right so which means that we ourselves need to maintain the discipline of seeking god being with him the importance of god's word in our lives right uh, not just intellectually knowing but following it with all our hearts and uh, and doing it right okay um so second thing is to maintain a life that is constantly consecrated okay what does it mean constantly consecrated okay anyone what does it mean when you say constantly consecrated what does consecrated mean what does it mean to consecrate something anyone <clears throat> it's set apart for a purpose yeah 
simple, right? It, it means that uh, something is set apart. We read about the vessels or the utensils in the temple that were temple that that was uh, that was consecrated, that was set apart for holy use. It was not used for anything common. Right? It was for uh, for the uh, what was used to be used in the act of worship or in what was uh, uh, it was never to leave that boundary right so our lives to be set apart and that is not one event but it is a journey right it is not one day of the week but it's every day of the week it's not one hour in the day but it is every hour of the day right to be constantly consecrated to be constantly set apart okay so that is something uh, again as spiritual leaders as believers actually it, it applies to us as believers but more so as spiritual leaders okay so um which means that we are as we are constantly setting apart our lives you know, constantly moment by moment you know we are we are just saying god my life is yours lord the choices I make, Lord, I want to delight. I want to uh, delight your heart, Lord. I don't want to grieve the Spirit of God in the choices that I make, in the words that I speak, in, in even the meditations of my heart. Lord, let it be acceptable, God, um, day in and day out. Oh, Father God, you know, I want to walk a consecrated life. I want to you. I want to live a consecrated life. Right? So when we do that, then we will not give any room for the devil to work in our lives. Okay, because uh, we see that the devil is defeated. We see that the Lord Jesus on the cross, he defeated, he disarmed the, the powers of the enemy. But the only power that he will have is what we give. The only permission that the devil will have is the permission that we give, the door that we open, right? the access that we give. It could be, you know, the devil will try to force his way in. And uh, if we allow that, if we don't resist, then he has his way. Or if we give place for the devil, right? So Ephesians 4 talks about, you know, let the sun not go down on your wrath, uh, nor give place for, nor give the devil a foothold, right? So in continuing in the works of the flesh, right, wrath, contentions, Outbursts of wrath are, are described as, we studied in Galatians, right? These are described as works of the flesh. Works of the flesh are evident, it says, and then it lists on all these things. So if one is continuing in it, if one is tolerating that or, you know, persisting in that in our own lives, then we are giving play room for the devil to work in our lives. Okay, so, and and we know what the devil, will, what the enemy does, he comes to destroy the work of God, whatever spiritual progress that we have made as leaders, or uh, you know whatever way we want to minister, he just comes to destroy that. So uh, the importance of being constantly consecrated, fully consecrated to God, right? Uh, and one First Peter five and verse eight says, "Be sober, be vigilant." Okay, so being sober means uh, don't be intoxicated, right? And figuratively, it means don't be just influenced by the works of the enemy. Like don't be intoxicated, don't be influenced, don't be swayed by the 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 wrong spirit, right? Um, so be sober, be vigilant, be alert, uh, be you know, be of a temperate uh, mindset or character, because your adversary, as a roaring lion, he walks about seeking whom he may devour, whom he may destroy. So that's the only reason the enemy walks about. So be alert, be sober, be vigilant. Okay. Then if there are strongholds, okay, get rid of it. Deal with it. Right? Um, strongholds, you know, we studied about that when we when we looked at when we studied emotional uh, healing and deliverance. Uh, we, we we looked into that. And uh, and also a good resource to go through is uh, one of our books, The Conquest of the Mind, 
right that's a that's a good book to look at so uh, demonic strongholds in the realm of our soul in the realm of our thinking in the realm of our imagination um because what happens is uh, if there is a stronghold then it becomes uh, our our actions follow through okay because if there is a stronghold in our thinking if there is a stronghold in our mind imagination that influences our action right and sometimes we 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 are thinking you know why is my behavior like this you know maybe why am i fearful why am i indecisive why am i you know upset and angry and um why you know the, the thing is to check our thoughts our imaginations and our thought processes and uh, they could be strongholds so if there are demonic strongholds which are leading to uh, unhealthy behavior you know sinful behavior that needs to be dealt with okay a mind that considers evil good and evil as good a mind given to worldliness is satan's foothold in a believer's life so it's like giving a foothold giving a place for sit okay and when satan comes he comes to hold restrict our you know make our uh, ministry ineffective unfruitful okay so strongholds thought patterns which we have become to- tolerant to sin we have compromised and uh, maybe replace the truth with a lie okay so so these are this is what a stronghold is so we need to check check our lives and see uh, how we can break that down you know reverse that process reverse it with the truth accept the truth receive the truth and uh, and so break that stronghold okay consistent immoral thought and behavior opens up doors of entrance to the enemy into areas of our mind affections and body so our responsibility is to keep all of this out of our lives right shut the doors of the enemy now it's it's not a difficult thing it's 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 a, you know it's it's not an impossible thing right because uh, scripture is very clear we, we again when we studied galatians we saw uh, how we are encouraged or exhorted to walk in the spirit you know when we walk in the spirit it's very very clear ephesians 5 i'm sorry galatians 5:16 walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh okay so the key is to walk in the spirit as led by the spirit as prompted by the spirit delighting the spirit and not quenching the or quenching or grieving the spirit right okay so to be a conqueror in these areas to bring down the strongholds to set ourselves free um and uh, another resource is laying the axe to the root of uh, laying the axe to the root which talks about you know self and jealousy and pride and lust so um, that's something that we can uh, look at also you know these are useful things to go back i know every beginning of every uh, you know every academic year in the bible college you know you've heard that message laying the axe to the root and the importance of it it's that's why it's repeated that uh, well these things can creep in to a believer's life creep in to a leader's life and so we need to be vigilant aware and uh, and lay the axe to the root so that these things don't hinder the work of god right or our ministry is not hindered okay then receiving healing for offenses hurts and wounds so so why are we looking at all this we are looking at you know one preparing oneself to be uh, a a leader like a spiritual leader right uh, a cell leader is a spiritual leader so you know one has to be healthy and uh, definitely this is one area where we can easily fall like being offended being hurt um yes it is true that you know in in life and in ministry there are many opportunities which come our way to be hurt right because people say some certain things people do certain things and uh, and they you know we get offended by the words that they speak or their actions right so you know if you look at acts 24 and verse 16 and this is what um, 
is what is written and herein do i exercise myself to always to have always a conscience void of offense towards god and towards men okay so the thing is this that to constantly to uh, 24 and verse 16 says i exercise myself okay let me see if there's another um, translation of it the version of it okay um so this being so i myself always strive to have a conscience without offense toward god and men okay i always strive which means i put an effort i work at it in order to have a conscience which is without offense towards god and towards man so you see both towards god and towards man right? sometimes we can be offended with god but how can we do that how can you uh, you know how can you you know how can you forgive that person how can you raise up that person uh you know how can you use that person you know these are things which means that we are hurt with you know how hurt and offended we are carrying some offense in our in our lives in our hearts in our hearts you know sometimes so we we ask those things uh, how can you use that person lord i know that person i know what he does i know what she does and, but how can you use that person and, and we, we get offended with god we of course we get offended with people because of what they say what they do right so um so the thing is to exercise oneself or to put an effort okay to train oneself you know that's the thing to train oneself to to you know it says to strive to train to labor now it doesn't come easy so which means we need to you know we need to take uh, effort in order to do that right to train oneself exercise oneself to have a conscience without offense okay so which means that okay you feel that you're getting offended immediately go to god release it to god release it to the lord and and receive uh, forgiveness okay. so there are you know four words which would help us right forgive forget release and receive okay forgive forget release receive so forgive that person forgive what they've said forgive what they've uh, done and uh, forget it i right? intentionally put it away okay uh, just push it away from your lives saying okay i'm not going to carry it anymore right um and then to release that give it up okay don't don't sometimes we you know we say i have a right to feel this way i have a right to feel angry i have a right to be hurt okay now as long as we say i have a right then we have not really released that right i have a right right to be angry with this person um as long as we say that we which means that we have not released uh or we have not released from that hurt okay now the thing is we have a privilege to be released okay so uh, let me just uh, type that in right forgive and forget and release and let's see <clears throat> okay so what how does that help so we we forgive and then we push away we forget and then we release so we don't holding the hurt we're not holding um the the holding the you know the the emotion of it it will take some time right but but that is what this exercise it you know so acts 2416 talks about exercising oneself striving doing some labor to be without offense to have a conscience without offense towards god and towards man so you exercise that you know, over and over again you do that release it and receive healing <clears throat> receive healing for our emotions only when we release are we going to be in a position to receive healing i mean we have that you know very honest conversation with god and say lord i i don't want to hold on to this hurt i don't want to hold on to this offense uh, i don't want to hold on to this anger so i i just release it uh i release it lord 
and i want to receive healing i want to receive healing and for all the hurts for all the wounds that are there emotionally i want to receive healing right so so that's uh, that, so we become healthy in that manner that way right and continue on okay no and maintain priorities now that's uh, that's again very important because you know as a cell group leader many many in our, in our churches will be volunteers or most will be volunteers right which means they have a work they have a family right they you know they have a job they have a, maybe they have a ministry even right so all this um in all these areas you know they have responsibilities or in all these areas we have responsibilities right so we need to know what is our priority okay so first and foremost our personal walk with god that's the number one priority out of that flows everything else right so our personal walk with god secondly whom god has put in or what god has given us you know a family or if he has placed us in a family he has given us responsibilities as members of the family as leaders of the family right? family then you know what is the work ministry what is the job what is the work what is the ministry so all these would come after that so we need to know our priorities okay so knowing priorities helps us to allocate time okay so pr- when you know this is a priority for me then i would allocate or i would give time for each of this uh, adequate time for we you know, for hours so in the 24 hours how much can i allocate how much time can i do i need to spend right if these are priorities right so um here are some things to consider okay so we need to know that activity does not mean accomplishments we're not you know activity means okay you're busy doing something right we're too busy doing something we're busy uh, working but that does not mean we are accomplishing something right you know completing something finishing it reaching some goal activity does not mean uh, accomplishment we need to understand that okay so uh, so we which means that we need to work um uh, smarter okay it does not just mean okay a lot of effort and a lot of you know sweat and grunting and you know it does not mean just that it means that we work smarter right maybe see how we can you know if if something that we are doing something some activity you know how will that impact you know what will be the greatness of the impact of this one act so uh, so if that is our mindset you know like okay we are here here i'm doing this one thing so if i put in this kind of effort you know how will it benefit most people right in terms of ministry how will it reach more people um you know to think in that manner or how can i save time how can i save resources um and how can i conserve energy and at the same time how can i have maximum impact with this right okay thirdly organize or organize i think we we looked at that in uh, you know um uh, in our practical skills course um we looked at that as well you know to get ourselves um, uh, organized you know organizing our time organizing people organizing our schedules organizing our resources and so on right so organize just means to put together to arrange together uh, if you don't do that then we will agonize meaning um, it will always be uh, you know something that's creating problems for us right then evaluate assess uh, it will help us to grow evaluate means to find out um, is something working well right evaluating ministry evaluating our personal life um, to evaluate to assess to see uh, to ask questions to see you know uh, so those are some ways to uh, there are some ways to evaluate it like ask questions you know just like how we saw the cell group you know uh, 
uh, inward, outward, to evaluate our own lives. Okay, uh, is is something happening? Is something something correct? Um, is it good or not? Right. So if we don't evaluate, then we will stagnate. We will be right where we are, thinking that all is good, thinking that all is well. Right. We will be in that same place. But if we evaluate, then we have the opportunity to find out what is missing. Right. Uh, we have the we, we, so we shouldn't be we should not be afraid to evaluate. We can find out what is missing. We can find out uh, where the gap is that we need to you know bridge. We need to fix. Um, where is the you know what is the area that we need to grow into? All those things happen when we evaluate. Okay, reschedule our priorities. Okay, um, so we see that reacting is not leading. Okay. So what does that mean? That means when when do we react when we are not prepared, right? Uh, reacting means okay, oh this problem is there, okay, then we uh, then we do something about it. Or you know, this is not done, then we do something about it. Which means that there is lack of planning and lack of foresight. Okay, so only when we come to that particular point then we realize that, oh, this is not done or this should be done. And then we are constantly reacting to situations, reacting to circumstances. Okay, Whereas leading is to look ahead, to plan ahead, to think of these kind of circumstances and eventualities right, and prepare ahead so that we can carry them out. Okay, say no to little things in the sense, you know, when it comes to priorities, when it comes to scheduling things, we can't do everything. Now, when we say priority, let's say you're prioritizing time with family, okay, you're prioritizing time with God, which means that we have to say no uh, to some things. Because we are saying yes to certain things, We, which means immediately we need to say no to certain things. Maybe... We, we maybe we won't be able to attend all the social functions, you know, all the marriages, all the family gatherings. We may not be able to attend that. So it means we have to say no, because there are far greater things in importance that we have to do. So we won't be able to do everything. So we'll have to say no to a few things, right? Okay. So um, how to say no gracefully? We are saying no to the idea, not to the person. Okay, that's very important. We're saying no to um, certain things because we're not rejecting the person. You know, though, though a person might come and ask, okay, can you do this? Can you be here? Or can you attend this? Can you come home? Right? So when we, when we respond by saying, no, I cannot, that means that you're not rejecting that person, but you're just very truthfully saying that you that very idea that that person suggested or that opportunity that that person is opening up or inviting us to you will not do it or you cannot do it simply because it's not in your priority right so so we need to learn to like, speak the truth in love right say no gracefully and uh, also sometimes respond in terms of the best interest of that person. You know, the best interest of the person who's asking. The person might be asking you know, n number of things, but you know, does it really help that person? Sometimes we say no because it does not, it's not helpful for that person. Okay. And uh, we can always you know, come up with an alternative uh, and creatively think of solving you know, how, how do we do this? How do we meet halfway? And uh, how do we, you know, solve that whole thing, right? Maybe we are saying no to somebody's idea, somebody's suggestion, because simply because, okay, it, we don't have the time uh, or it's not pr priority, but then we can say, okay, maybe someone else can take it up, right? Maybe someone else can. I won't be able to do it personally, but let me suggest this, because you want this particular thing to be done. No, it's not like I should do it, but you want this particular task to be done. 
or this you want to receive this particular help right so let me see who can help you let me see how we can meet the same thing but i personally cannot let me check if that need can be met okay so come up with an alternative think creatively okay so uh, all this is part of preparing to be a leader okay then a very important thing is that we lead by example i think first timothy 4 timothy is encouraged by paul to to lead the believers by example to lead the church by example by example meaning let your life speak right whatever you are leading the people to do let it be seen in your life whatever you are asking instructing the people to do let it be seen in your life you know, if are if you are asking them to be on time you be on time if you are asking them to speak edifying words you speak edifying words if you are asking them to treat your the family members in the right manner you you treat them in the right way right if you are asking them to spend time with god more time with god you spend more time with god so you lead by example okay so that's what uh, paul tells timothy so the thing is that when we lead by example there is no disconnect okay disconnect between the instruction disconnect between what we are ex- our expectation of what people should do there is no disconnect between that and our lives and our behavior okay there should not be a disconnect because if there is a disconnect then people will say you know people will say, it is hypocritical right who is a hypocrite who says one thing and who does something else that right? who has something else in his heart and who says something right he says all the right words but then inside he is a different person he's acting right or you who, who's uh, you know says something hey we need to do this but then he does something else right he's not being truthful she's not being truthful but wants he says that we need to be truthful right we need to be people of integrity but that person is not being a person of integrity himself or herself so that means that they are not living a life that of you know being an example to others so as leaders we need to set an example be an example to others and paul talks about how we can be a you know example in word in conversation in in love in spirit in purity in faith and so on all these areas so if we are being examples then we will have people who will be like us and even better than us right uh, because you know we always reproduce after our own kind right so if we are leading people and we reproduce after our own kind people who are passionate people who are connected and so on okay okay now we're going to look at uh, the heart of a leader maybe you know just take a couple of minutes and then we'll stop here the heart of the leader you know being a leader in god's kingdom definitely is not uh, uh, it's not it's not impossible but it's uh, you know it's it is difficult it is challenging right so that's something that we need to know because it is it is responsibility right being a spiritual leader is uh, being a leader is uh, it means responsibility being responsible okay so we need to avoid a couple of things one is inferiority okay so you're comparing yourself or you're looking at yourself and you're saying i'm not worth it or you know i cannot i'm not able to right and i think you know when we look at scripture we see many examples like we see moses we see kidian um coming uh, uh, i mean giving their reasons you know why they cannot lead right why they cannot lead uh, certain things which they felt was inferior you know, which, they, which they did not measure up right so we need to avoid that right we also need to avoid something like a superiority thing where we, that leads to pride we're saying oh i'm capable i'm gifted i'm i'm so and so i can do it right 
it's good to be confident it's good to be courageous uh and uh, but it it needs to come from a place of humility like when we say i can do all things through christ who strengthens me paul is talking about a lot of difficulties a lot of tough situations where in which he is an overcomer right but he says through christ who's my strength right i can do all things i can do all these things but being connected to christ who strengthens me who because of that i draw my strength and i'm able to do okay. so now that's a uh now that, that that's a good place right that is um to be humble to be in a place of humility but if you are saying okay i can do it I, then you know uh in my own strength i can i can achieve this and that's a place of uh selfish ambition that's a place of pride and can lead to arrogance and boastfulness right okay so we'll stop here okay and then continue in our next class uh more about leaders more about uh, bring about uh, leadership uh and then you know developing the leader in you so this uh, some you know some very very useful information here um useful training which we can use for our own selves and also for leading others right uh we'll we'll come to that in the next class so next class we will start with a, a new life of servanthood right uh we'll just review what we shared just now and then we'll go on to a little more okay okay All right thank you god bless you guys we'll catch up in the next class okay right bye